So I'm here at Future Music Camp with uh, Tobias Shiwek from uh, the company uh, Endor Me, your founder and CEO. So uh, how's it going today? And uh, thanks, for, thanks for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. So uh, let's talk about the company. Uh, it's the first I heard of it uh, here at Future Music Camp, so I'm really excited to know all about it. Uh, what do you guys do? Yeah, we're pretty much new. We, we just launched like six weeks ago. And uh, the first step how we launch is what we call the Flipboard for Entertainment. Yeah. So what we basically do is, for you as a fan, we take you all the stress to, to aggregate the relevant information regarding your artist. And relevance means, in, in both ways, relevance in, in terms of the artist himself. Like, is Shakira really the artist Shakira? Is it an animal? And uh, your personal relevance, like, you, you might be interested in releases, but not that much into live concerts. So uh, we provide both of it. This is why we call it Flipboard for Entertainment. And uh, as we get all the stress for you out of the business, we, we do the same for the artist. So we aggregate, again, traffic and relevance for the artist himself. And we just push back and forth the traffic that he needs to ticketing, to merchandise and stuff. That's the first step how we start. Uh, you don't need any active artist at this point. It's just aggregation. Awesome. And so, uh, what, what, what uh, spurred you to start a company, and what, you know, what what did, did you see as a market need uh, to to create a service? Uh, actually, the, the need comes from both sides. My my co-founder Tim, he he's very much into live concerts, and he missed two times in a row his favorite artist playing in Cologne, where we live, um, just because he missed it. So, for instance, Facebook is not made to, to be, stay up to date with your artist. Uh, but on the other hand, artists uh, experience exactly the same. Like Lady Gaga, she had about the most fans on Facebook. Nonetheless, she, she founded her own network because it was made for, for that relationship. And what we want to do is we want to create more and more of those universes between fans and artists, but leverage it all over every artist. We think that there's a, an enormous need, both on the fan side and on the artist side, to, to find you your dedicated home to, to, to just to engage with, with the artist you like. And so, um, of course, it, it requires quite, quite a lot of work on the aggregation front. And uh, you know, what do you find are maybe the hardest platforms to aggregate from uh, to create a channel of this kind? I think it's not the aggregation itself. It's, uh, it's the relevance, again, uh, to, to find all that semantic web and, uh, and to dig deeper and deeper and then provide a very nice user interface that, uh, that makes it easy for you to efficiently uh, access what, what you're really looking for. Like, like. And uh, talking about, of course, artists are very important to the equation, so getting them on board is, is really important. So are you, are, you talking, are you targeting labels or managers, or what's your approach on that front? Um, actually, talking to everyone who who's interested and and the funny part is that we, we started obviously to give interviews explaining what we're going to do, what we're going to do and that in a second step we we'd like to have active artists that engage directly to their fans and our on the, our original plans uh, sounded like let's do it in 2014 15 but musicians started to to approach it already and, and they want to have active profiles they want to have some some kind of tools to access directly their fans and that's why we start to create it right now and uh, we talk to both, we talk to artists, we talk to some indie labels, but we already have some, some universal guys uh, that are very interested and uh, that are already providing us with some in background information and, and connections. Yeah, sure. And um, so how do you feel like um, fans can best consume content like this? Of course, the, consum the consumer is the second part of the equation to this. So do you, do you feel like it's a mobile app play? Uh, is it an integration through notifications or of some sort? Uh, how, how do you best keep people updated on what's happening? So in, in the midterm, it, it is for me a mobile application. It is exactly the situation when you sit on your couch and, and you're, you're watching that video of David Hasselhoff and you just want to see what, what he's doing nowadays. So you take off your phone. It's, it's habit creation for us. You don't have to think about what, what you actually eat. You know, if, if I asked you, tell me something about the history of, of Italy, you, you might go to Wikipedia directly. Uh, and we want people to go directly to Endormi and check what is happening around David Hasselhoff. Uh, and this is a mobile application for me. It's to kill some time when you're in public transportation. It's to... to to be used on the couch. But today we use a website because you can iterate much quicker. We want to yeah. learn a lot about the behavior, a lot about the market. And if I, if I had to go through the approval process of an app store, and uh, if I had to, to you know, create that mobile application over and over again, that would take much too long. So this is why we start that early phase with a website that might be optimized for mobile pages as soon as possible. But uh, if I had to bet, I would say in two years, we have no website anymore, but a lot of really good applications that run directly into TV, maybe, and on your mobile devices. Yeah, 
Sure, sure. And uh, uh, of course, you talked about live as, as, a, as a big uh, part of, uh, of the need for an application like this and also to keep up to date with what's happening. I mean, uh, it often happens to me that I've, uh, there's like a, maybe like a rough trade, you know, a special show or something uh, in Brick Lane that I, that I miss. And so well, uh, the, the live side is interesting because there are other companies that operate in that sector. Uh, do, do you feel like it's more an integration play? And how do you plan on getting the data on, on, on the live side from, directly from Facebook maybe or for, for, from the artists themselves? Yeah, wherever it comes from. So uh, we want to be an aggregator. And if we find a service that is much better in, or it's already really established and knows exactly what it's doing, um, there's no reason to develop it ourselves. What we do is we just get the traffic, we find the relevant people, and we, we hand it over to the guy that knows already what to do with it. Yeah. Ticketing is a perfect approach, so why should I start my own ticketing service if there's already Ticketmaster? Uh, but what I can do is I can find that specific fan that is around Seattle who wants to see a certain band, and I can put him right through to Ticketmaster and, and buy this ticket. Yeah. And this is the same for, for life for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I would encourage uh, listeners of DMT to go and check out endor.me and uh, see what the site is all about to check out some of the artists and if uh, you're an artist yourself is there any way that you, they can get in get on the platform is it automatic or yeah we do have a landing page so uh drop us a line and we are really looking forward to to your feedback and we'd like to to develop more and more tools together with you and, and this is what we do on a on a weekly basis today and uh yeah we're happy to to, to get feedback from the industry directly well thanks so much thank you